Okay, so now we know uh, about what the Big Bang is. So now we are going to begin our study of the origin of the universe by talking about what happened at the instant of the Big Bang and then from that time forward. So at the instant that the Big Bang occurred, we're going to say that we start our stopwatch. So the amount of time that has elapsed since the Big Bang will be zero seconds. The temperature of the universe, we don't know. It would have been hot. How hot? I'll show you in just a moment. Okay, then what would have been the size of the universe? We don't know. It would have been small. How small? I'll show you in just a moment. Okay, then you've got what was the universe composed of? We don't know. Uh, getting kind of monotonous here. But in our previous lesson, we talked about what superstrings were. So superstrings are a hypothetical uh, entity. Uh, so we have no evidence that superstrings exist. We've never seen a superstring, but they're a, a, a theoretical thing that is composed of energy, and as it vibrates, it can be any kind of particle that you want it to be. So at one frequency, it's this particle at a different frequency, it's this particle over here. Okay, then what would have been the force that would have held, uh, that would have existed at this time in history? We don't know. But in our previous lesson, we talked about how the fundamental forces of the universe go together and that uh, the ultimate force that we're looking for is tau, the theory of everything. And then tau is going to break apart into the four fundamental forces that we see today. So that's what we know at the instant that the Big Bang occurred. Not much. Okay, from our previous lesson, we also learned that we can take fundamental constants of the universe and put them together to make fundamental quantities of the universe. And so, uh, for example, you have the speed of light C is a fundamental constant that comes from special relativity. And then you've got Planck's constant H is a constant that comes from quantum mechanics. And then you've got big G, which is the gravitational constant, and it comes from general relativity. So scientists with obviously too much time on their hands started taking these fundamental constants and putting them together to see if you could make fundamental quantities in nature. And so if you recall, we talked about the seven fundamental quantities in the metric system was length and mass and time and temperature and electrical charge and then the mole. So by taking various combinations of these fundamental constants, they were able to come up with fundamental quantities in the metric system. And so notice that very first one is called Planck length, and you will see uh, that it is uh, approximately 10 to the negative 35th meters across. Okay, now keep that number in your head as we continue. So, uh, and another, another one that you should see is Planck time. So Planck time is 10 to the negative 43 seconds. And then also notice that there is this thing called Planck temperature. Okay. Now these are going to be our fundamental quantities that we're going to begin with. Okay, because if we go to this chart here, this is a review of how the fundamental forces unify. So that the weak nuclear force and the electromagnetic force go together first to make the electroweak force. And then the electroweak force combines with the strong nuclear force to make the grand unified theory or gut. And then finally the grand unified theory combines with uh, gravity 
at still higher uh, temperatures to make tau the theory of everything. So notice what was the temperature that they chose for the, the point at which the grand unified theory and gravity combine and turn into tau. So you notice that that temperature is the same as the temperature on this chart. So these quantities represent how far back in time can we go and still use the laws of physics in order to explain how the universe works. Because the current laws of physics today have generated these fundamental constants. And then also notice what is the furthest back in time that we can go and still understand how the universe acts. And that is this 10 to the negative 43rd seconds, which again we got from putting together these fundamental constants. So that's the reason why when we start off our discussion, we're going to say that the universe was a certain size and a uni the universe was uh, a certain temperature and we start our clock at a certain t point in history because anything prior to 10 to the negative 43rd seconds, we just don't know what happened because our current laws of physics, as we understand them today, break down prior to that point in history. Okay, let's take a break, and when we come back, we are going to talk about how did the forces decouple.